Tonight, we have an enormous nine ball match to offer. The U.S. Open champion playing the current world ranked number one, Kevin Chang and Coping Yi. Welcome, everybody. Mark Wilson, Danny Dilberto here at the 18th Annual Derby City Classic. And Danny, any pre match thoughts that we should be looking for? Well, in this I just one? want to remind people about how Chang played in the U.S. Open. I never saw anyone play better than that. 60 years of playing pool in tournaments. I never saw anyone play that steady. And he won every match handily. Yeah, he didn't have a close one. We we marveled that week. That was, uh, you know, we've been around a lot of U.S. Opens, but the, the consistency of the quality of performance that we saw there was unparalleled. And it was very compact. Stroke mechanics produced it, along with the most intense focus that we've ever seen, ball for ball. He takes a great deal of care when he sets up on the break, and you will notice the eye pattern here. Him and I were just talking moments ago, and we were talking about the possibility of him either breaking and running out all nine racks, or closing out the match with a break and run out, and I was just uh, joking around with him a little bit. But nonetheless, he's the type of guy that could do something like that. Very unassuming man. He speaks pretty good English. Look at that break. Copigny, yeah, he made the cue ball. Totally parked the cue ball. It was already stopped, and something came and kissed it all the way back. So I know uh, on the total performance average, Pat Fleming marks it down as a scratch. When I do it for myself, I do not. Different when you dunk it right in the side and the cue ball was moving. Here he hit the break perfect. He did make a ball. They both come, you know, from a Chinese Taipei and have trained in the same school over there. They have a specific school set up for the top tier players. Pool's an enormous sport over there. And so the uh, results of this match will certainly be offered throughout the public. And so there might be just a little bit more at stake than just a pool match here in terms of the personal pride. Co at the table, made the one ball with ball in hand. Pretty wide open layout. Now he's going to draw the ball back, shoot the three. Same pocket, but he snuckered himself. Yeah, he either was billiarding the eight, which I think that's what he was trying to do there based on the results, because he wouldn't have missed the, the draw stroke by that much. And Kevin Chang is not likely to be punished to the fullest extent of what he thought. He thought at minimum was going to cost him a rack. And Cole will need to hit the ball and then hope that it turns out in some type of a position that could be kind of a backdoor safety. Not likely to make the three from here. Good hit. He's going to sell it out. I think you got to hit the nine here. I don't see how you would miss it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to hurt him, you know, just the four is right out in the middle. Yeah. Purposely going to send the nine ball towards the side pocket where the cue ball resides. Now hit it off that side to try to pick a position on the four to the side pocket. So even though he has to bang into it, it won't be done just willy-nilly. He'll be playing to a particular side of the nine ball with the cue ball from this shot. Beautifully executed. That's yeah, world class. Perfect. Very smooth, very confident. He wasn't distracted by the fact he was going to collide into another ball, but then hitting the hitting the object ball very clean makes a great deal of difference on that. We are using the forty second shot clock with these top tier players. It's seldom ever an issue. Yeah, it hasn't been so far. Forty seconds is a virtual eternity, even for a deliberate player. But it keeps them on notice and it keeps the match moving, makes it more spectator friendly. Economy of travel with the cue ball, drifts it over for the nine ball on the side in game number one. 
in the pocket goes to U.S. Open winner Kevin Chang. I have to tell you, in my conversations with Kevin Chang, I think the world of this kid, 27 years old, very unassuming, no ego whatsoever. Very, he's a gentleman for sure. All about excellence of the sport. Doesn't talk about money. Uh, very proud, very humble man. Hardworking, disciplined, compact swing. What more could I say? I, my only regret is he didn't go to Lindawood University and plays on my <laughs> billiards team. Well, <laughs> or turn into American and play on the Moscone Cup team. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, he looks close enough. Yeah. He would, oh, man. How would you like to have five Kevin Chang's on your team? Be tough to beat. Uh, I don't think anyone could. So consistent. Uh, Stand-up guys, they don't lose to people they should beat. They're not erratic with their lifestyle. It's not drinking and all-night gambling sessions. And I'm not saying they're adverse to playing money matches, but the, some of the other side nonsense that goes on that drags their sport down, these guys are not involved with. All right, rack number two, Kevin Chang breaking. He's changed his break position. Six balls on the wing. Did not park the cue ball quite as well. Six ball trickled in. He's got position on Great the one. Shot. I remember at the U.S. Open, this is where that one ball ended up time after time. And I was trying to explain to some of my friends, and even when I went back to my college program, how he played the wing ball, played the one on the side, and position on the one when it didn't go in the side. And he would oftentimes run two or three racks at a time when he would get the break. And that's what Danny and I remember vividly as we watched all week. Well, there's the two pass. The four ball. If, if it does barely, I think he's playing position to get it in the side. Yep. That's like telling us it doesn't pass the four. Well, I think it would, but if you don't fall just perfect, you don't have much margin of error, and I think he felt like this was a little bit more comfortable zone to get to, had a little more leeway. And this brings him to the three ball better. It's automatically going to be on the three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you see a conservative play like that, uh, that's just good, uh, solid, world-class pool. It aids consistency when there's an economy of travel with the cue ball. Getting from the four to the five will be next. He's already anticipating that by how he plays position. He's going to draw it if he doesn't scratch here. Boy. <laughs> Close. Yeah, that was a little out of control there. And they normally purposely take the side pocket out by going another six or seven inches away from that side cushion. I think he's going to draw the ball here. I don't see going forward. Going forward, you got obstruction. I think he's going to just hit as full as he could and draw the ball. He has a tremendous draw stroke, too. Yeah, look how easy he hit it and how far it went. And he's got the angle now to go two rails to the seven. He preserved an angle, but he, he the cue ball's on the rail, so it maybe somewhat diminishes how close he can work his cue ball into the seven. He'll for sure get a good angle on it, though. That's what he's looking. Come up to the side pocket and bounce away. He'll go just past the side pocket with the cue ball now. He will not try to overdo it. I like the focus, the eye pattern right now. You see him lining up. He wants to kind of steal his resolve. This, this needs to be precisely st struck, so it's not just cobbled into the pocket. Otherwise, your ball speed in the exact direction are greatly affected. Great shot there. Yep. He's got an angle on the uh, 7 to go to the 8. He can do whatever he wants here. He can play the 8 in many pockets. Well, first of all, he's got to see if he passes. Looking at it again real hard. Looks like he's going to mass it a little. Well, I'm going to have to retract my... Th I, I was really kind of thinking that he had this much easier, but now, based on the three times now, he's had to look at it to make sure that it goes. 
suggest that it's not quite as perfect as possible He's going to masse it a little, too. Watch this. He might be jumping a little as opposed to masseing, because that seven ball yeah, is, is a long ways from the pocket. Well, you were right. He masseed it, Danny. And he didn't make it. Yeah, this game, you you got to win that game. He didn't fall on the seven good. That's an unforced error for not getting out there. And this is where Pat and I agree when we do our TPAs. It is definitely a position error and a missed shot. A double penalty. Got a pin hit here, so the cue ball is going to move a little bit. I think he'll go two rails back and forth. Hit the end rail. Well, he went three rails nicely, too. <laughs> That's four rails, but Danny always says the last one yeah, doesn't count. Yeah, the last count, one so. doesn't count. So if you're counting at home, don't be upset. I'm just interpreting. Co also with a compact swing. Just stop the cue ball, bring it back an inch. Good. This nine ball is all that separates him from the, tying up the score. One game apiece, Cole will be breaking. Very nice crowd here in attendance. Looking out, I see Betsy Sundholm of the University of Michigan Billiards Program. She's a big supporter of our sport and collegiate billiards. I think the world of her, she's a real sweetheart. Sacrifices and contributes tirelessly. Her husband, Derek, plays in this and plays quite well. Comes David Thompson in the arena with his camera lens. He'll do anything to get in here on media pass. Carries around the camera. Doesn't, doesn't usually use it. It's just a prop to get in here for free, Danny. Really? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but it could be real. Yeah, if you know, if you know David. You know him very well. <laughs> yeah, you would know it's certainly a possibility. <laughs> Not really. I see Terry Elrod there in the front row. Gary Brown. Come from around St. Louis here. All right, Cole breaking, same spot that Kevin Chang did. Six is on the wing. Went in. Oh, he crushed him. The one in the side, the six in the corner. Very nice break. Got a shot on the two. Yeah. And the two, three, four, five are all down there near each other. So if he falls on the three... He figures he gets those four balls. That's the whole problem here. Two to the three is the only mm -hmm. little obstacle. He gets through that. The rest of the rack is going to get easy. It's it's kind of a funny thing, too, because the two is very, very makeable, but the cue ball doesn't necessarily want to go right to the three. You can't really hold it easily. But if you try to go around the table, the four and five are big. Yeah, I, I think he's going to try to go between the four and five. Let's see what he does. Good call. Uh, and if he, he brushes could, that, uh, that's at not least good. He, well, at least he can protect himself. He can bank at this ball if he's so inclined. I kind of think that he will. Yeah, it looks like a bank. It's not a certainty, but he might inadvertently get safe should he miss it. And uh, the fact that he's going to win the game or he feels like he's going to win the game if he succeeds here makes it a playable shot. He drained it. He's got the angle on the four to go to the five. Doesn't want to go too far because you need an angle on the five. Get close to the seven. Good enough. And this really goes to what dictates the outcome of these matches is the volume of unforced errors. In the last rack, Kevin Chang did not get out when we were thinking that he had a great chance to get out. And then he lost that game, and now it looks like he's going to lose a subsequent game without even coming back to the table. 
On average, with great players, winter break, nine ball, unforced errors cost 1.2 or 1.3 games. And then, oftentimes, they make a ball in the break and hook you. So there goes 1.2, 1.3 games. And then when you come back, you're kicking for your dear life because they don't leave you nice. And it can easily translate into three or four games before you get back in to have another decent shot. First break and run out of the match for Copigny. He now leads two games to one. Yeah, after the bank shot, everything uh, was easy. Yeah, you cannot take that bank shot on if you're not going to win with it. It's foolhardy. But if you feel like you can win with it, then it's definitely a go. Meanwhile, in the chair, Kevin Chang cannot be beating himself up over his unforced air, but rather preparing himself for his next opportunity. Chang has three, three airs in the match. He has a position air, he has a missed ball that he played with a slight mass A, and he has a scratch on the break. The scratch on the break was a not an unforced error, but rather a, a misfortune where he'd stopped the cue ball and got kissed in all the way up in the corner pocket. The other two, he's accountable for. Five ball on the wing. Co locks in on this. Pocketed the one in the side last time and the wing ball. Well, made the five. One ball's going to settle in near the pocket. The four ball's going to come and save the day for Kevin Chang. Yeah, he, it got him. Got right between the four and the one. I mean, the one and the cue ball. We're going to see a push out or a kick. And we may see a push out to a kick. But uh, Danny and I have talked about it many times. This is where we think you should be forced to play from right here. Yeah, I don't care for the push. Just clean up the rules. It's one foul ball in hand. If you get, you know, like last rack, the, the other guy didn't have any any say in the, the fact that he made a couple balls and got a good shot. So the, the opposite is here, in effect. Sometimes you make a ball and just have to play. And this is what chews up the time, too, when you talk about speeding up the matches and keeping the fan interest up. He pushed. I don't blame him. He's playing poker now. Now, I don't think he pushed where you can bank the one in, but it can go two cushions. I don't know if we can get the overhead here in time, but he can bring the one ball over here and have the cue ball come way down table. Down here. It's very poorly drawn, but the basic gist of this is he would like the one ball in the center of the end rail with the cue ball down table behind the eight. Well, maybe it's not there. So he, he made the push very, very thin, which means it will not go to the center of the end rail. It is very thin. But he can fan it and leave the cue ball long. That's all he can do here. Yeah. He pushed, but Cheng didn't go for it. Yeah, you just got to go long, leave distance. Good shot. I don't care what happens. It's a good shot. Well, Kevin Cheng is going to win on that exchange because he is going to have the first good open shot. Yep. But like Danny said, that's all he could do, and it could have turned out even more favorable. And it does put a little pressure on Cheng to make a ball with some distance. He's got a shot. It's not a gimme, but if he makes it, position will be there. I think he'll have the two... In the other side. Oh, 
Oh, that's smooth. gonna be good. Yeah, very smooth stroke. These guys are professional athletes. They travel with an entourage that all hail from the same school in Chinese Taipei. They train. Wednesday's jump cue day. Every shot is struck with jump cues there for four hours. They are compensated as professional athletes, but expected to train as such, and that's where you see this great focus and, and very compact stroke mechanics. It's ingrained in them. They're revered athletes in their country. I think that's how the Filipinos are, too, in the Philippines, right? Well, they're revered, but they do not have any structure. And this is why I would say that formerly uh, Manila was the pool mecca, but I think now it's Chinese Taipei is pool mecca. And these guys are set up to continue to progress in the sport. I think the best player is going to be coming from Taipei. Okay, Ko forced to play a ugly safety from a kind of tenuous circumstance. Made the most of his shot, left a shot. Kevin Ching converted it into a win. It's been an interesting match here in the early stages. This is a race to nine. Earlier, we were informed both players are undefeated, so neither one will be eliminated from this event. very ritualistic about his break. He rubs the cue ball off, he chalks up. He gets up and down on it once or twice. See him lining up here. Good eye pattern here. For those at home that want to play better pool, invest a little bit more with your eyes and the aiming on the break rather than trying to just apply brute force. Dead center of the cue ball, wing ball, and one ball. Both went in. Two balls not going to be easy. Nope. Uh, it got worse. The seven ball got in the way. Was not going to be an easy shot had the seven not got there. But in this case, he has to consider a safety play. And yeah, he can hit the two. Not an easy safety either. Not at all. Three is in the way. Gonna take a moment and reflect as the shot clock winds down to 20 seconds, counting. He does yeah, get I one extension. I don't see a, a, a real good safe either. You know, he can't go three rails. The two will be going the wrong path. No, he's got a problem here. Just need to just lightly glide across the edge of the two and not move it much in this fashion. You're not gonna get him hooked, but. Uh, that's as much as you can really reasonably hope to do from there. You would yeah. have liked to got it behind the three, but you also have to know that the likelihood of both things happening are slim. No easy shot here. Or position. Nope. He's determining if he wants to try to cut it in the corner, play it cross side, or play a safety. Right now, I don't know what he should do. He's overlooking at the bank. I think you go at the nine with the two and just play safe, come back with the cue ball. You know, it doesn't have to go astray because the three is on the other side of the table. I think you shoot at the nine here. All right, well, Coe is the current world champion. We'll see what he thinks about this. He's, he's 
really not settled on what he's going to do, but looks like he's going to play the two all the way down in the corner pocket. Oh, I don't like that. Pretty good stroke. But Pretty good miss. Yeah, I didn't like that thought. Now he sold out without a chance of winning. You know, he didn't hit the two good. He never threatened the pocket. In fairness to Coe, he felt like if he was to score that ball, he was going to win the game. So it was not just a shot up in the air and a hope. He, he did feel like he could go ahead and take advantage of that shot. But like Danny, or like Danny said, I think maybe that was just too low of a percentage play there. It was. No. Chen has to go two rails, maybe hit the, hit the seven after the second rail. Good speed there, Danny. Yeah. Oh, he fell in there just as pretty as could be. Very good. No more problems here. Everybody here knows that I work for Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri, which is we call St. Louis, really. And uh, in the most odd of circumstances, the interpreter for the Chinese Taipei players that come here, most of them do not speak English, graduated from Lindenwood University. <laughs> what a peculiar thing. Yeah. Because it's a fairly obscure school. But anyway, I'm kind of in with their players due to the fact that the interpreter and I have a lot in common. Kevin Cheng played one real nice position to begin the rack and then captured the rest of the balls, leading the match three games to two and breaking. from Birmingham, Alabama. Great guy. Good player. Yeah, he's having trouble with the rack. This is where I really uh, enjoy the Accurac because it kind of speeds that up. Yeah, it does. Really does. This is boring to watch a guy rack. Well, he's done racking. Now he's opted to move the cue ball to the other side of the table. I never know that he's been successful two out of three. He's changed all three times where he's breaking from. Always when I'm successful, I always go right back to the same place. Yeah, I, I'm a sucker that way, too. Well, I even persist when I'm not successful. Now that I think about it, I have my favorite places. <laughs> I have to fail on a few times before I move. I always say, watch your opponent, too. If he's having success, don't be stubborn. Break and do what he's doing. This time the wing ball nor the one ball went in. But he left the one. That's what uh, I mean. I, uh, I'm not sure of the strategy of that, but maybe these guys read the rack and determine that there's a more favorable side to break from. Apparently, that would be the case. Cause... It's going to be tough to fall on the two. Yeah, I don't know if you know this. Dennis Hatch is here in the field, and he looks to be playing very well. Fit. Well, he's cleaned focused. up, you know, and he's he's 
giving it a shot to, you know, go all out. He's a great player. Oh, no doubt for many years. Did Cole let the cue ball get away here? Just No, no he's all right. Dennis was my pupil growing up. And really been a top, top tier player since his teens, his mid teens, you know, even, you know. Great that. player. He's won a lot of the uh, Mike Zuglin tour. Powerful stroke and uh, tenacity, I would say. Yeah, he's a real good player. Rub the six away from the rail. Still has a position for the three. Well, is he looking to see if the six passes? I mean, the three passes. Now he's looking to see see what he's looking mm -hmm. at the six. That's right. Looks like it's frozen on the nine. Might not pass the nine. Good time to check it before you start running the balls. I always say it, if you don't have a clean run out, play position for a good safe. And if the six doesn't pass the nine, he does have a good safe. It must be somewhat iffy because he seems bothered by it. So it, it probably yeah. goes, but it probably doesn't grow, go completely freely. <sighs> Well, we'll find out shortly. Because it's four, five, six. Oh, he's going to dislodge oh, yeah. it. I don't know if that worked. No, it didn't. That was the gamble part. You know, he, he opened them, but he snuck at himself. He went in there with pretty good pace, too. You know, you kind of think like he wouldn't get hooked there so much, but... Well, you got it. Well, I think Poole has a lot of that Murphy's Law thing where if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. If you turn it loose at all, it just seems like it always gets awkward or locked up. Now he's got to kick one rail, it looks like, as opposed to two. It's not close enough to the side rail to be a valuable two rail kick. Well, you got to hit this because anything is better than... He did play two rails. He hit it well, too. Yeah. He's going to sleep in the street with that hit. Yeah, he went into the balls on the blind, gambled on getting snookered, and he did. I think I would have rather just played for the safety. He had a good safety. Well, now Kevin Cheng looking at kicking in the five. Never a hurried approach. It's very, uh, gets his resolve up. Tremendous care and preparation for any big shot or break shot. Well, this is a big shot. He's betting the game here. I mean, it's a big ball. I'm sure he's going to hit it. I don't know if he'll make it, but he'll hit it. He hit it all right, and he didn't make it. <laughs> well, now he's sleeping in the street. We have a tremendous talent pool here at the Derby City Classic. Players come from all over the globe, participate. I'm not going to ask you how many countries. No, I really don't know, and I That's probably why should. I didn't ask you. Yeah. 
further embarrass me with questions I don't know yeah. the answer well, to. Well, a lot of entries, you know, they hit, they're uh, representing multiple countries, I'm sure. We certainly got a bunch from Germany. We got the Netherlands covered. Yeah. Niels Fine, Nick Vandenberg. Mika Eminem's from that area, too. Helsinki. Walking out of here last night, I watched Mika beat another good player, and I'm trying to think of who he was playing, but I remember it was a guy that, oh, the uh, the kid from Kuwait. I don't remember his a name. Real young kid, right? Yeah, plays real good. How old is he? Uh, I asked him. He's 23. Looks younger, though, right? Well, he's got a little bit of his, you know, sparse facial hair. He is a killer. He's been playing here nonstop all, you know, nine days of this event. I admire him. Great at great disposition. He played Skylar Woodward a big match the other night that I watched. That was interesting. Three threes our score. Co breaking. Well, that's the break that gets the business done. Yeah, look where he parked the cue ball, and the one went straight inside. Along with the wing ball in the corner. Coe looks to be the more dynamic breaker in this set. That is a heck of a weapon, the nine ball having a tremendous break. Shot there. Real good. Perfect. Looking back on my career, Danny. I would say it was my weak break and poor shot making that kept me out of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, I had a weak break, but I somehow got in the Hall of Fame. But my break was terrible. They they laughed at me. You know, I broke them in nine ball, and it was a legal straight pool break. When I first used to admire your game, it was at the Sheraton in Chicago at the straight pool tournament where the break was not such a big weapon. Yeah. I learned about tenacity from you. Every year I went, 32 killers in the field. Danny DiLiberto was not the most talented player in the group, but nonetheless, he always finished in the top four, just on sheer fight. Well, he's got a good enough angle here to bounce to the eight now. He took care of that all right. Yeah. <laughs> Textbook pattern, wouldn't you say? 
Yeah. They can break and run out of the match now. Never looked like a problem. Co leading Ching, four games to three. Well, I would like to know the history, but you, you didn't do your research, it looks like. How many times have they played each other? Who's winning? You know, interesting stuff that you don't know about. They've played each other 34 times. Chang leads uh, 18 to 14. <laughs> I got a feeling you just made that up. <laughs> uh, most all facts are 90% of them are made up on the spot. You did it very well. <laughs> I had to kind of hesitate and think, but no, I truly don't know. But I, I know they've played each other an abundance of times in training and in competition. Oh, the great wind ball break. flew in, the cue ball he controlled right Damn. in the middle of the table. Isn't that something? Not pretty well, there. Is this ball going to get in the way of the cut on the one? I think so. Yeah. He's got a billiard, or he could just play the combination. I like the billiard better if he can roll it softly, but I don't know. He might have to stroke it to glance it. Yeah, it's hard to tell from here. It looks like he can kind of ease it up there, and then it becomes a matter of controlling the secondary object ball, getting positioned on the one from the billiard. So sometimes the combination, even if it's just slightly more difficult. Uh, He's looking at either the billiard or the combination right now. Plays the combination, the cue ball is going to fly around the table. Yeah, he's playing the combination. Cue ball might go behind balls. Look at that shot. Made yeah. both of them. Well, he's got a hit on the two now, but not much of a shot. No. He's got Safety. a bank. You think he'll bank at this? No, I think he'll play safe. Yeah, he does too. But he's not sure yet. I think he'll try to put that two ball down here on the end rail and handle the cue ball down behind the nine. Oh, he's able to cut it. So, oh, what a shot yeah, that he was. He was close enough to think he can cut it in, and he was right. Hey, the audience responds, too. That shot a little... Bit of applause out there. And he had good speed getting to the three. Yep, even better than playing safe. That's the safest play if you can make the ball. He won the big tournament in Asia to get the number one ranking in the world. And that was the world championship. And he's referring to, I think. Yeah. Be's a great field. Oh yeah, boy. he kind of decelerated, Danny. He jumped up, too. He did, he yeah. He stayed down with the stroke. Yeah, well, I'd love to see a replay of that. That was good. Let's see what happens when you have a little stroke breakdown. He knew the cue ball was going to drift away from the seven. Oh, he's not happy about that. No, because he knows he shot with kind of a split mind on that shot. He, wasn't, he didn't like it. He was a little dissatisfied, and then... Uh, he compounded it by flinching a little bit. Four threes are score. Kevin Chang with a big advantage now in this rack. Clock is going to wind down and start again. Yeah, Kevin will not need his extension any further in this rack anyway, so no sense saving it. Gonna play the eight and nine in the same pocket. Total control. Very routine nine ball now to tie the score at four games apiece. 
Chang will be breaking. You know, Johnson City ran from about, like, say, 1961 to 72 or somewhere. That's in that. exactly what it ran. And uh, were you there many of the years, all the I years? I didn't go to the first one. Then I read the article in Sports Illustrated, and I got hooked. I had to go. Then I didn't miss another year. 943 to 864 are TPAs, chain in the lead. Did you play all divisions when you first went, or how did that work out? I didn't plan to. I, was, I never saw a one-pocket match, so I didn't enter the one-pocket, but Hubert Koch talked me into entering it, and I drew him and beat him. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what, what type of entry fee did they have for that? Do you recall? I think like $75. Which was big money at that time. By yeah. It would be like 500 a day, I would say. You know, reasonably the tournament decent. lasted like 28 days. <laughs> was it that long? Yeah, but the motels and the eating were very inexpensive. Holiday inns were $10 a night. You can get a nice country meal, like $3.50. Well, and I always say this, if you didn't see my uh, induction ceremony, there were 10 women to every man. I'll leave that alone. Four to four now was our score. Kim and Chang breaking. Could break too. Powerful. Oh, he made a few. He's going to get a shot. He is. He's going to have a shot here on an open layout. Not an easy one to play position on the two, it doesn't look like. So far, they're trading punches. Mm hmm. Can he hold that, Danny, for the two, do you think? It's awfully hard oh, I to think tell. He's, yeah, he might brush the uh, six. The six, and that will slow the cue ball down. Doesn't figure to get hooked, so it oh, should have I, not. I think he's pretty good. He, even if he doesn't brush the six, I think he still can hit it soft enough. This is where accurate pocketing makes a difference because how it hits the pocket determines how thick or thin you land on the six. Got a little inside spin, too, to kind of check it up if it hits the rail. No problem. That's Simona's cloth. Beautiful you can shot. hit the ball thin, and it will travel. You don't have to pound it to make it go somewhere. That's the Simona's cloth and diamond table. I think he's got to draw the ball two rails get to the uh, six. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's a very comfortable way to play the shot. I guess most of our shots are struck below center, so we feel more confident that way. You could have gone one rail, but this yeah. way it allows you to use a little bit more pace. Right. That's why it's done. Accuracy reasons. Yeah, he got a little straight here. He'll draw it one way. We'll oh, see yeah. the draw stroke now. He might even be able to just go forward and two cushion it out. It's, I'm not sure what angle he has, but but we can see now he's drawing it out of there. Yeah. Q will be one railer. Without hitting it hard, he got perfect. Couldn't have put it better with your fingers. And just like that, the first break and run out of the match for Kevin Chang puts himself in the front, five games to four. I would imagine they work on fundamentals pretty heavily in their school over there. Yeah, you can kind of tell because all their strokes are very, very similar. And, and I mean, compact yeah. and, and the economy of motion. Flawless. 
the whole game, folks. Get the fundamentals down or you'll never be a player. Well, the mental intensity they bring, the degree of uh, focus shot for shot. Americans hit about two balls that way, and then they go on holiday for a ball. It just diminishes the consistency. They're very disciplined and hardworking. I always joke around about all their styles because you could let one of them play half the match and then take him out and plug in the next one and you wouldn't lose anything when you did that. Eight balls, the wing ball this time. It flew in. Oh, and three ugly oh, kisses. Oh, look at that. Uh, really shame because yeah. he, he made the one. And look at the two ball. The, the two balls froze to the seven. I don't think he has anything but either maybe a, ki a bank or a, safe. or a safe. Yeah, I, I think you play a safe here. Highly irregular. The balls yeah. would line up like this. You're right. He might be able to play a cross corner bank and, and safe at the same time. I think he could play the three. Yeah, the kinda... three. You're right. You know, he can play a snooker and position. Well, he's doing something else now. Is he, is he banking his cross side? He's un undecided. <laughs> cross corner makes more yeah. sense because you're playing safe and position at the same time. If you do it cross side, you're betting the game. Oh, he doesn't like that. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this is very logical. But I think he kind of feels like he has to be cute with the cue ball trying to play the cross corner. He feels like he's going to make more of these cross side. Well, if he makes it, it's a good shot. Okay. He, well, he hits out of the pocket confidently. Yeah. Now I think he can go one rail to the four. He's got an angle on the three to hit the side rail. Spin it over with a little right-hand English. High with a little right, he'll be he'll be fine. And he still has an angle to get to the five. Now he's going to need the right angle to get to the six. I think the right angle will be two rails, but he'll hit three. Yep, that's what he's going to do. You got to come short when you hit that side rail after two rails. You want to hit it upstream short. You can shoot this pretty hard. Is he going one rail? It might be. He is. That's preference. You can get there a hundred times going two rails. And the other component of that is when you're at the table, you can kind of tell sometimes there's a little fraction edge that we cannot see from here that you feel more confident about. So while well, I could do it either way, there'll be a one way that you prefer when you're down at the table. Well, he did it right, whatever he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Chang, the recipient of a second ugly kiss on the break in this match. Both of those ugly kisses on the break have turned into scratches and ultimate losses. 5-5 five, five our score now. Yeah, I'll race to four.
clean, nice looking guys. I think they save a lot of money on razor blades. I don't think I don't think they shave. Right? Well, I don't know. That. I presume they do. They look clean shaven. Oh, I don't think they shave. Oh. I don't think they have a beard. Ever. I no, maybe that's true. I don't know. Not, I'm not insulting them. I'm just jealous. Six ball on the wing. Go breaking. <laughs> Cue ball. How do they do that? It just stops dead. Stop perfectly. Wing ball, one ball, both go in. Has In played. position. Gonna, <laughs> he's going to have a combination on his three, four. He can hit the rail and go a little closer to the combination. He might go, I thought he might go all the way across the table, but no, he feels good about this combination. Oh, it's sitting pretty good. All right. The three is not going to go anywhere. It'll be right there. Effortlessly, so he didn't need to do anything more, and that's silly to do more than you'd absolutely need to. I think he's got to draw this around three cushions. What does he think? Oh, he went one rail. That yeah. might be a mistake. Yeah, he's going to get there, it looks like, but that is not... Barely. Uh, oh, boy. He was not anticipating yeah, when, that. When you gone... Three rails backwards, Mark. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can see there was very little margin of error. If it stops just an inch short of where he's at now, the position was going to be no good. So to, whatever, I wouldn't have, you know, intended for it to go well, that way. Well, if he got straight in, he's going to have to play the uh, bounce on the cushion. Up, yeah, he's going to have to play the seven up the far corner. There's always danger getting by that point of the side. He's not going to be able to be real close. So oh, no, he got a yeah. little thinner than he wanted. That's going to require a heck of a good shot now. Yeah. You know, position is there automatically, but watch out for that point of the side. This tests your courage because you know you should have been better on this ball. And now you know it's missable, and it's easy to have that little flicker of ambiguity in your mind when you deliver the stick like, gosh, I hope I make this. No problem. No. Now, that's the thing. Jason Shaw never suffers any second guessing or doubt of himself. That's the thing that makes him so effective. Uh, this is absolutely textbook breaking run out here other than the position error there in the middle. But very, very nice, that break. Whew, that's powerful. That's his third breaking run out of the match. And he now leads the game six games to five. Can you see the TPA over there, Daniel? Yeah, he's, he's shooting 900. Chang is shooting 933. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, these guys are playing They're hard. They're trading punches. Playing hard. Very exciting. Kevin Chang sitting in his care, chair, and he's very collected. Looks totally comfortable. I noticed they had the same stance when they break. Mm -hmm. Identical. Yeah, I've noticed a few others. And I'm, it's almost like they try to clear the hips or something. Uh, yeah, they're not stepping back. They're, they're up pretty high. See, so watch when uh, Chang breaks, if he does again he's got the same stance no i completely agree is he gonna get a shot on the one here it didn't lightly graze the 
No. Yes, he is. He's going to have a golden opportunity here. Yeah, he didn't make a ball. Yes, he did. Oh, he made a ball. Yeah, yeah the ball went in like a ball. Oh, it did. Yeah, it blew in. Yeah, he parked the cue ball. I was nice. watching his stance. That's why you're here. Yes. Answer all questions the best I can. Look dumb. No, not that. <laughs> you're being modest when you say, uh, anyway, never mind. <laughs> I know you don't mean it. You know we're having fun. Yeah. You got to have fun. Just eases that cue ball away from the end rail to the center of the table. Perfect. And yeah. You know, he just has to stop and if he's he can, there. Well, if he makes sure, yeah, he likes it. Oh, you got to just stop shot. Boy. It'll be perfect. Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, the three, four, five to the seven to the nine. But we got to make the eight in between there. Just stopped the ball, which he did. Now he's going to have to draw the ball. And rather than try to be perfect, I think he'll draw all the way to the side rail and back out by it in the same corner. Right. That gives him a better target for the four. Unless there's a little angle, in which case he may draw to the side. No, he just took the draw to the side, which he did yeah, have the proper perfect. angle. Very good. Less is more. <laughs> Barely move the cue ball. Stun the cue ball forward. Now he examines the exact angle he wants here, so it's an easy transfer from the seven to the eight. I think you just go on the rail, you'll have the angle. I don't know. He's well, gonna, he's gonna have to weird. go forward now. He didn't he didn't do that anywhere near as well as what he could have. The ball was hanging, so he had his option. He could play the inside placement or an outside placement. He kinda got in the yeah, in between he's gonna zone. Go two rails forward. Nicely. Yeah, smooth. Cut right through it. But Play the eight and nine in the same pocket. A little more work than we anticipated. This would be Copigny's fourth and break and run out of the match. So he's got, uh, when he makes this nine ball, he would have seven wins, four by virtue of break and run out. Much approved there. That's a pretty good ratio. Beats almost anyone. He's up to 9.15, 9.13 on his TPA. Chang's still at 9.33, but trailing. The it's telling, been a, a pretty good match, mistakeless. Absolutely. The, uh, the, the telling component of this will be if we see the total balls pocketed. So, well, Chang is leading in the TPA. I bet he's pocketed less balls. Probably. There's the track rack. Or the rack track. <laughs> yeah, there you get to see it. 42 to 63. Yep. Big differential. That's why he's leading. Yeah, it's that total balls thing, and then we get a good look at the break. He's six break or six out of seven breaks have been successful. That's powerful. Six out of six. I'm sorry, I was looking at the score. Gliding Chang along. Scratched yeah. a couple times on the break. Yeah, none by his own making, though. No. They were both misfortunes of luck. Five balls, the wing ball. There's our stance that you're talking about. Yep. He will park this cue ball. It's just remarkable how hard he hits him. The wing cue ball. ball went in, the head ball went in. I guess the two might be going in. <laughs> I'm thinking that while Wednesday is jump cue day, I bet all the other days of the week are break day because who breaks like this? If you don't just train every day and train hard on just that one shot, you cannot, you're not capable of hitting it this well. He made four balls on the break. But his opening shot is a little bit tricky. You know, I don't think he's going to hit the uh, seven or the six. When right. he shoots the three in, can he roll it and play them both in the same pocket? I think he'd I, prefer to go a little more pace and go with the extreme low and try to kill it. 
by bending it to the first rail a little bit and then maybe even accepting less than ideal position on the six ball. Because running the cue ball around the table here, given the distribution of the seven, eight, nine, is going to be really treacherous. Yeah, he's got work to do. Yeah, he's going to try to kill this by bending it. Stayed very still, Danny. What a nice shot. Yeah, great shot. Now he needs an angle on the seven to get to the eight. Yeah, he loaded that up with backspin, and you can see the pace really came out of it once they hit that first rail. Yeah, no letdown, just He's cue balls. draw it around. Well, just to the center of the table is what you're after. He needs the angle, and he got it. Now I think you draw, you go past the side to avoid going in the side. That's where he played. was heading. <laughs> yeah, he looks good. Oh, boy. This is the world champion, WPA number one player right now. He's giving us a glimpse of why that is. Yet another break and run out. That's the fifth of the match. Coping ye. Down the hill. He is on the hill now and playing great. Kevin Chang hoping to get one more turn. If I was Kevin Chang, or if I was coaching him, I would be saying, now prepare for this turn. You're going to get up here. You're going to run out of a great rack. And totally be prepared to make a tough shot and win a rack here. And then once he gets that, then maybe he can get his break on track and, and initiate some offense, get back in this match. It's easy to fall victim after the guy breaks and runs out a couple times of thinking that ah, I probably won't even get a shot. And you're spending energy on something you can't control. You should be dwelling on what you're preparing to do. Easier said than done because you try to get in. Inclination, human nature, you kind of get involved in what the other guy is doing. Six balls are wing ball, in like a bullet. Cue ball was stopped and got kissed. Two ball and the cue ball going to check up pretty nice. The one like. ball went in the side again. And he's got a chance now to close out this match. He's got a pretty good shot on the two. Super momentum, too. I think he's got the right angle to go one rail to the three. <laughs> These guys have nine ball down to a science at this point. Yep. The top tier players. Good shot. This match is fixing to be over. Danny trying his best to put the commentator's curse on here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in that anyway. You just mentioned it when it happens. Yeah. Well, he got straight on the four. Five doesn't go in the corner. That only leaves the side. Well, can he draw it and stiffen it one rail to the five? I think he's going to draw it out and play it in the side, maybe, or yeah. one on the corner. Yeah. Oh, oh, you no, said, he played yeah. it in the other corner. Beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful because he, he went the path of the cue ball moving not so far. Shortest route. That always is good. Well, he's going to be out. Shang never got back to the table. No. Nope. He's going to close he out this good match. Too. Yeah. This would be his third consecutive break and run out to close out the match and sixth of the entire match, race to nine. It's hard to beat. That is hard to beat. Kevin Chang's going to play a 933 and lose. He concedes. Well, really, the story of this match was uh, coping Yi's break. Yeah. Hey, this has been another world-class nine-ball performance delivered by AccuStats, the worldwide leader in billiards programming. On behalf of Mark Wilson and Danny DiLiberto, so long for just a while.
Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shocks dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters.